Hey everybody, welcome to the Central Clubhouse, a video podcast of Price Central. My name is Owen, I'll be your host tonight. Uh, the goal of this video podcast is to help our church family feel a little bit more connected as we hang out together in our virtual clubhouse with different members of our church family and getting to know them a little bit better. Today, I get to hang out with two very special guests. We have Pastor Harold Kim and Pastor Hank Kam in the Central Clubhouse. Welcome, my brothers. Uh, guys, as you guys know, Christ Central is about to celebrate our 30th anniversary as a church. That's 30 years of God's faithfulness and goodness to our church. And God has used many pastors over the past 30 years to minister to our church. And you are both pastors that God has used in significant and very fruitful ways at our church. So thank you both for being our special guests on this podcast as we reflect together on God's amazing grace and faithfulness uh, to our church. But before we begin, guys, let's briefly catch up. Uh, Pastor Harold, tell, tell us where you're serving now and in what capacity. This is such a joy to be together with you two <laughs> long lost brothers. Uh, I'm serving at CCSC. I cannot believe it's coming on to my 15th year. Wow. I just uh, experienced a five long, five month long second sabbatical. Mm. And. Uh, I feel old and excited. I can't believe we get to <laughs> kind of catch up after all these years. I just saw Hank this last week. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit mind boggling and surreal. And uh, Owen is my best man in BFF, but he ran away as far as he could. <laughs> it's been what, seven, eight years? I'm starting my 10th year here, bro. Gabe. Oh, 10. Gabe. I got here wow. in 2012. Has it been? Oh. It's crazy. Now, we're we're going to reflect and reminisce a little bit in a little bit, but Hank, catch us up. Tell us what you're doing right now and where yeah. are you serving? So I'm. we are enjoying our 13th year in the Air Force, and currently I wow. am the, the deputy wing chaplain at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. Which is in which is in Hawaii, and we've been here since July of last year. So we did the COVID cool. move. Wow! And and again, and before we start reminiscing, uh, give us a brief update on your families. How how's, how are your wives and how are your kids doing? <laughs> start with Pastor Harold. I know you got some big news with your family. Oh, I have two lovely daughters, Taylor Elizabeth. Elizabeth Taylor backwards. Uh, Taylor's going to be going to a school called University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. Okay. Uh, can you believe her... she's going to start college? How, how old was Taylor when you guys were at Christ Central? Well, look, Pastor Hank baptized Taylor. <laughs> and Owen, you are asking a question that is uh, can't be answered. I was not married when I was at CCPC when I first got huh? to your verge. So, hey, Owen, last time I checked, yeah, I don't think I should have a baby uh, before meeting Sunny. Wait a And second. we were not married. And Taylor and Elizabeth were both born uh, in the Fairfax Hospital. So remember the doctor wow. there? Wow. So both of my girls are Virginian, completely Virginian. And they were very young when we left. So Taylor's going to UCLA over my yeah. uh, over her dad's kind of subtle pressure to go to another school, in North Cal. Uh, mm -hmm. Elizabeth is a full teenage, I mean, beauty queen and just full of energy and humor and empathy. Um, Sunny stays with me after 19 years of marriage. <laughs> she, I think, still loves me. She does not laugh at any of my jokes, though. And I don't know if she likes me that much, but I it's think she still loves me. It's always been yeah. <laughs> Hank was there from the start. Hank and Gene witnessed this, and, uh, you know, they had some uncomfortable moments looking at the dynamic of our 19 years uh, marriage. And... You know, uh, over dinner, me and Lizzie, uh, we were talking about your Elizabeth, and what Lizzie remembers is when they were little, Elizabeth – at telling my Lizzie to call her Unni because she was, I think, uh, a couple of months older. She said, you have to call me Unni. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, she uh, has a major, major, yeah. Funny. 
It's funny. Uh, Pastor Hank, tell us about your family. How are they doing? Yeah, so Gene and I, we're celebrating uh, 15 years this year. Wow. And uh, wow. the way that we, the way, the wedding that Gene wanted was like a destination with like friends and family, like someplace like, like Hawaii. And instead uh -huh. she got like a thousand people coming to, <laughs> you know, the old CCPC building. She didn't yeah. know like 800 of them. It was like, we ran out of food. Her mother had to go Popeyes across the street because it was just, it was the zoo. It was, a, it was madness. So we, we're going to renew our vows on the beach here in Hawaii so I can make it up to her for having, uh, having her go through that. Wow. And we have three boys, uh, Eli, Eli, who is 12, and then uh, Ezra, who is eight, and Edmund, who is six. My two youngest boys were born in England, but Eli was born at Reston Hospital. Uh, so... Gene, I, I think right when we left the church, Gene had, Gene was pregnant. So, wow. man, and Ta Taylor was one of our flower girls at our wedding. So, and <laughs> she was like three years old. It's crazy. I cannot believe. Dude. Amazing. Amazing. Time has flown by. Yeah. My gosh. So uh, let's, let's uh, get people caught up here a little bit. So, um, Pastor Harold, what years did you serve as pastor at Christ Central, and what were some of the roles in which you served during that time frame? Yeah, I was actually trying to go back and get the right date. I think it was 2001, okay. 2001-ish, and um, I just finished up at THM over in New Jersey, and it's actually Pastor Hank, Pastor, pastor Hank and KCPC's Korean ministry senior pastor, the founding pastor. One Sang Lee, uh, mm -hmm. they graciously invited me. I started off as a college director, and those are unforgettable experiences. Uh, they just threw me, I think, with the most, um, let's say, colorful crowd, and uh, <laughs> cut my teeth there for about a year. They were so awesome. They're friends to this day, a lot of the college leaders. Every Bible study like started 45 minutes late. I mean, I barely could get like 10 people together to show up consistently, and just felt completely <laughs> inept. I was like, well, college ministry over here is pretty different. I, I just don't think they, they like the Bible or me very much. I think about 2001, and we, um, I finished, what, 2006? Yeah, 2006, because I started at CCSE 2007. And wow. I was, uh, there was a full year out of ministry between CCPC okay. in Virginia and CCSE okay. here. So you were there for about five years, from 2001 to 2006? Yeah, I think okay. about five and a half. Yeah. Okay, so you started as a college director. What are some other roles that you served in during that five-year tenure? Yeah, I think it was just college director, and then Hank and the whole church lost their their minds and asked me to be the lead pastor. I was a uh, twenty-nine thirty, and I think I I think one big sign back then, to be honest, Hank was Hank had been single and I just got married. So I said that was like the mark of oh. Harold must be somewhat mature and he must know what he's doing in life. And so I had just gotten married and uh, that's how I became, I think, partly, you know, we passed and Sunny was pregnant just right away. Mm. Yeah. It was a, you know, Taylor was, I conceived one month right after we were married. <laughs> oh, I, I know all the church was doing calculations like, that's nine months. Okay. Nine months, 10 months. Oh, that's okay. And uh, uh, how long was your tenure as the uh, lead pastor? Do you recall? Okay, Hank, can you help? I think, what, what, what was I, in college? What, four, one year? So about year? four years? Maybe, maybe so a little over a year. Maybe a little over a year, yeah. So yeah, uh, about, uh, about four years as the lead pastor. Okay. All right, Pastor Hank, tell us about uh, your stay and your tenure at our church. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually was hired. There were two other pastors when I was there at the time, uh, Pastor James Lee and Pastor Kenny Choi. And uh, Kenny Choi was a friend of mine from uh, when we were in seminary to together. He was like, hey, come down here. We need help. I, I interviewed for a job uh, that was weird, to say the least. So what it was, was okay. at that time, our dear sister, Sarah Yoon, was serving as the church secretary. Mm. Ah, and I think she was stepping, she was moving on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what they wanted to do was hire a pastor, but the reality was they didn't have a church secretary. So at the job interview, they were like, hey, we can't hire you as a full-time pastor. Can you come on and 
be like a part-time church secretary. And I was like, <laughs> what? And I remember at the interview, one of, I, I, a person who will na- remain nameless was like, so, so why, why, why are we interviewing you for this job? And I was like, I, I don't know. Why are you interviewing me? I think this is a conversation you guys should probably have you know, internally. And I remember I another never leader knew this was so story, embarrassed. Hank. Yeah, another leader was so embarrassed about this person saying that. They're like, oh, please forgive our dear brother so-and-so. But, um, you know, we're trying to figure things out. So the offer they made, to, I still remember everything. The offer they made to me was part-time secretary, part-time college ministry director. And they said, if you get the college ministry, you know, up and rolling, um, you know, maybe it could become a full-time position. And wow. So I, yeah, I came in. I was doing, like, church bulletins. And, like, I remember, like, the weaker, like, less than, like, a month after I came in, we had like our annual meeting with budgets and stuff. I had no idea what was going on. And so, <laughs> I, you know, Sarah was trying to help me. I remember there was a couple of nights where I um, stayed, o- I slept over at the church just because like, I was so overwhelmed. And I was like, oh, what wow. did I get myself into? And the first college group meeting I had, there was one, I'm sorry, there were two students there, Mark <laughs> King and, and Ange Chong. Uh, Angie oh. Chung at the time came and I was, and I, I just come from a college ministry of like 300. Uh-huh. And so I was like, what the heck is going on? And, yeah. you know, but the yeah. Lord was, was gracious. And uh, I slowly took on the college ministry, but a young adult mm-hmm. and I had wonderful help, you know, my early workers, mm-hmm. servants like uh, Sam Kang and JC Chang mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Gina uh, Gina Kim, Gina Park now, um, who were wonderful, amazing leaders, and then got added to our numbers. People okay. uh, started coming out, and uh, and we started um, Mana, which uh, Pastor Dave okay. Larry took over, and then after, eventually, Pastor Harold took over. So mm. after they took over, the reason why they had to take all that over was I transitioned from church secretary, college pastor, to college pastor, Mm. The young adult pastor, and then, okay. um, and then I was the interim for a while because James Lee. You were the was, lead pastor, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, yeah, like interim because James Lee went on a one-year sabbatical to. Okay. Uh, and then during that time, I was the interim, uh, and after he got back, he resigned, and I was the interim for a little bit longer. You remember Pastor Lewis Harold? Pastor Lewis came on board for oh, a while. Of and he, um, I, I think, I think he came on with maybe the hopes, or maybe someone even mentioned that you know he could maybe slide into that spot. But when that didn't happen, oh. he resigned, mm. and so I went from being the interim for a little bit longer, and then and then made the transition. Once Harold became the senior, I, okay. I kind of be I um, was the I guess the associate. I think I was the associate pastor for a while, and then. Uh, after Harold left, I became the interim again, and then, and then I left. Man. So that and was 10 years. I got there in 1998. Okay. And I left in 2008. So, wow. 10 years. Yeah. 10 I years. think, I think, I you're think. About to, you're about just... to overtake me, Owen. <laughs> I, I, I think you have the longest tenure at our church. And so well, I'm, I'm bumping right up against that bit. right now. Just for a little bit. But I think was Hank was I mean that's incredible just recounting how many roles yeah, you played and I didn't even know you were called that way Hank you yeah. you accommodated and, I mean, and served and adjusted and you were the glue the backbone mm, as I look back yeah. I can honestly say that and even yeah. after I left I, I I remember you on sabbatical I was going to show that later oh yeah and Hank had to come back from sabbatical because I quit. <laughs> well, the thing was, it was, you know, once again, not to throw anyone out of the bus, but like, I volunteered to stay. He was like, I'll stay here, through, you know, until, you know, Hank gets back from his sabbatical. And they were like, nope, we're going to call Hank and ask him to come back now. And I was like, what? Uh, yeah, got, they were like, soon, Harold. It was like crazy. So, yeah, I came back and it was, yeah, my, my sabbatical got cut short by wow. a lot. Yeah. You, you know what I love about the two of you guys? You guys are great storytellers. Probably the two best storytellers I know. So I'm going to put you guys on we've the spot. had some great stories, Owen. <laughs> it's like so, truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. So tell us both of you. I want to hear 
your one or two favorite stories of your fondest memory, your funniest memory, your most outrageous, bizarre memory that you experienced at Christ Central, just to kind of give us a little taste of what it was like when you were pastors at this church. So Harold, shoot. Do I get to start? Yes, sir. Uh, there, there are just so many. Um, I have to choose carefully. Uh, uh, I would say in general, court, in general, yeah. So I look, I, I, I was, I was twenty nine thirty, and I think the majority of the congregation at that point uh, was about a decade older. So they're in their forties, okay. just get right into their forties. Uh -huh. And these are brilliant. I mean, conservative doctors, lawyers, business entrepreneurs, you know, they live in huge mansions, Great Lakes. And I was just a little bit bewildered, you know, over my head. But I realized all these men started like doing some weird things. Like one person <laughs> bought a candy apple Corvette <laughs> and it just didn't match his personality whatsoever. <laughs> and then after about a year or two, I just realized like all the men who were older than me were just acting to be quite frank, a little moody, depressed, <laughs> like a downer, somewhat cynical about life. And I was like, dude, what's your problem? What's wrong with these people? <laughs> now, starting 10 years ago, I look back as I hit the throes of midlife crisis and I look back at those men, I'm like, they handled it way better than I have. These guys were incredible. They got mm. Corvettes and motorcycles and yachts and whatever, they did what they had to do. Uh, but I now understand what some of what they were going through. Uh huh. Hank, one of my favorite memories is actually more recent. You had become the senior pastor. You invited me to speak out for a retreat, one of the most unforgettable retreats because I was honestly felt like a reunion. You know, I really felt like just a full a kind of restoration with CCP Senior Church on account of you. But I looked at the same parents. And I said, you know, I've got to be honest with you. When I was a pastor, you know, oh, just must be so much better than I am. Because you all look so happy now and energetic. You guys have all this, like, stuff. And you're like, I heard you're so faithful at church and committed and giving. And they're all like, oh, we're empty nesters now. Our kids left. <laughs> and I just, you know, Owen, I, I hit that stage when they're in midlife. Then mm. I came back and saw them as empty nesters. I guess I mean, I'm looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in general, they really doted on us. I mean, Sonny mm. and I felt very loved, kind of spoiled. Yeah. I, I think yeah. they had extra grace, newly married, 30, Sonny was 23. 23. Why? <laughs> Pastor's <laughs> wife moved up from Doral Park, Miami, Florida, to a, you know, somewhat different environment, culture, with no family around. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm thankful for that. Those are just wow. some of the memories. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. Hank, regale us with some of your stories. All right. So I, I, I there's so many. Uh, I, I can remember two. When I was doing college ministry, I was sing I was single for what nine out of the ten years that I was a pastor at that church, and uh -huh. I had this oh I had this open door policy, and okay. all the college students and, and young adults knew it. it's essentially like a door open, and and my house was a halfway house. I think during the time that I lived in the house in Urban, there were, I think, I've had a total of 12 men live with me. People <laughs> like Song, Elder Song Hong, who was one okay. of my roommates, to, you know, Sam Kang, um, you know, uh, Phil Carroll, Chol Kim, uh, you know, just, just the, you know, there were there were lots of men who lived mm -hmm. in my house. But there's one time, this, this memory I have, where I was sleeping, and uh, a member by the name of Mark Kang, came into my uh, house and he thought, he, I thought this would be, it was like two, three in the morning, I don't even remember. And he jumped on my bed and he uh -huh. woke me up. Like uh -huh. I remember, I, I almost, I, I, I thought someone was attacking me. And he was like, oh, Pastor Hank, were you asleep? Uh, remember that Britney, Britney Spears DVD I lent you? Can I get that back? I was like, wow, Mark, it's two in the morning. He was wow. like, oh yeah. I, you know, I just—I mean, that was my life. College when I did when I did singles ministry, there were I I was go, looking back now. I realized I was going from burnout to burnout because I had no boundaries in my life. Pastor Harold was one of my roommates. I mean, you know, I, yes. I just had men. Okay, Party so central. Sound disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> so G lived in a house for one year. 
after we got married and when we were cleaning up, she like almost threw up because she found male oh. like stuff everywhere. <laughs> and I didn't know what man it belonged to. Like, <laughs> like pube hairs in the cupboard. She was like, how do, this is disgusting. I don't even know if they're yours because there have been men yeah. that have lived here for yeah. decades. I was just like, you know, yeah, the, the, the best thing foul. that happened to me in, in ministry, getting married was probably one of the best things uh, that ever <laughs> happened to me because it, it created some of that necessary boundaries. I really was going from burnout to burnout. The second memory um, <laughs> that I had, I look, I look back and I'm, I'm so grateful and, hey, um, bachelor parties are off limits. It's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not gonna I'm just gonna I put a little. Well, just, just, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a stop to that no. right away. <laughs> no, no, no. But go ahead. So, so, so Pastor Hal and I, we both got ordained together oh, to the ministry yes. there, okay. and our ordination process in, in the Korean Central Presbytery, right? The one That's one that yes. we belong. Uh, Korean Capital mm -hmm. Presbytery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Like I, I, I am, I am a, I'm, I'm Greek. I, I'm, a, I'm a fraternity brother for a fraternity to the side, and so I, the only other place I had seen this kind of stuff was in hazing. We took it was hazing. Yeah, it was, it was hazing. It was Straight hazing. up. We take our exams, and this guy comes in, and it's like, you guys all fail. And we were like, we fail. They're like, yes, you all failed. Repent. We were like, what? How am I? We're looking at each other like, what? How do we? And we were like, we see our exams. Where did we fail? He was like, no, you're not going to see. Me. <laughs> he was like, and he left the room. And we were like, what? How did we fail? I mean, it was, mm -hmm. the exam was kind of challenging, but it wasn't like, and this mm -hmm. the Korean guys are panicking. They're like, we, we need to get on our knees. And like, and so the guy comes in literally. The guy got on his knees and is like begging for, he's like, please, please. And the guy was like, you know, one more chance. You come next week in humility. And you come again and you take another exam. And we were like, oh my God. I, I, I think Harold at one point was like, what? I think I'm done. And I was like, this is crazy. I don't think this is ridiculous. Yeah. So we, we came back the next week and they're like, oh, you guys all passed this week. And they didn't show us the exam again. Oh no, they never. Oh, that's the crazy. It was, it's just it was straight. Like, and it's then, just straight. And then they had this. Yeah. They had the, they laid their hands on us and and you know had this like wonderful ceremony. You know after, it was just the weirdest, funniest like, call into ministry, I'd experienced. <laughs> I still remember it was April, April oh, of what was it, two thousand two, and wow. it was just so zany. Like I, I can't even, I can't even. Uh, but it's such, it, it's those crazy memories that I remember. It's, it's a, it's the madness. Yeah. It's the, it's the bachelor parties and, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the, uh, you know, when, the, when, the when, other guy was taking the exam, he had an emotional meltdown. He was having a panic attack. Oh really? He was wailing out. and crying right next to me. I was just, he was I was like, what out. is going on right now? It was yeah. so weird. I yeah. really think those those words. I mean, it was like, "What is going on right now?" And, and yeah. I remember what is it was going like on? that maternity too, that hazing. I love it. Well, I do have oh. some good news for you guys. The the presbytery has reformed a lot. It's changed a lot. In fact, uh, out, uh, at our last presbytery meeting, English speaking guys outnumbered the first generation Korean speaking guys. Now, so there's wow. been a, a shift wow. in uh, power and balance. So, uh, some good things are happening in our presbytery. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, you know, you know, guys, whenever people talk to me about the glory days of Christ Central, they always say, Oh, Pastor Owen, I remember the glory days of our church. And they always are talking about the time when you two, it's it's when the two of you were here together. That's like in people's minds, uh, the, the glory days of Christ Central. So when when you hear stuff like that, how does that make you feel? And then, and what does that make you think? What What are your thoughts about that? When when you are dubbed as being the the pastors during the glory years of Christ Central, <laughs> <laughs> speak.
speechless. Hank and I are laughing. laughing. It's, it's speechless because we can't believe it. Uh, just like. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Well, I, 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 when I think about, when I think about like, you know, I, I, I kind of think the same way. It was, it was, it was a, it was a really great time. I, you know, I, I think Harold and myself, we were, we were growing in our ministry. We were trying new things. I think the church yeah. was, yeah. your body was increasing our numbers. Uh, we had great mentorship with Iwan Sang Wuxanim. You know, there were just lots of great things going on in the ministry there. And, you know, what's funny, what what I would say is, you know, and I think people, they, 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 they just don't, um, oh, I, I was going to say this. It's just because it was glory years doesn't mean that there were challenges and I, I think Harold and I went through something which I've seen in the past and in other churches and such, um, like it, it, it really divide or bring the opposite of what you would consider glory years. You know, to go from mm -hmm. that transition to come in, you know, it, it really took a lot of maturity on Harold's part. Like from him to come in, you know, oh, as a college man. group master, uh, pastor and then transition to the senior. And, you know, that whole transition is not something that, that normally happens as seamlessly as it did. And so, mm. you know, I, e even with all of that, there, there's lots of transition, you know, during those glory years, we had pastor, you know, Lewis leave, you know, we had other pastors come and go. Jeff Jew who was with us for a season, had to come and go. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, there were other people who, you know, came and then shortly after left, you know, people like Pastor Jimmy Wu and, um, mm. and others like that. So we, we it, it wasn't, it was an interesting, it was an interesting time of ministry, but at the, even, even with all that, I, I would, I would say they were, they were glorious. I had, mm. for the most part, I, you know, I had people jumping on my bed at two in the morning. I mean, what more can I yeah, so. Hey, your, your open oh, house policy, the hospitality was just extraordinary. And you still mm. are to this day. The way mm. you love and serve people, your guests, even though you and Gene, your family, yeah. it is an unbelievable ministry. Um, yeah, the, the, the reason I reacted like that, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised and I'm, I'm really grateful that people uh, refer to it as glory days. I'm only coming from the projection. I'm too limited. I'm only thinking about myself. And, you know, I just think that I was in over my head and failed in a mm. lot of different ways. That's the way I look back at it. And it was very painful to leave after five and a half years. And the fact mm. that God used that to build the church. And I know it helped set so many kind of foundational lessons for me. You know, mm. I've been here the last 15. And that is really due to uh, so much of what God was showing me at CCPC in Virginia. And again, we were mm. loved on. And you know, mm -hmm. the, not saying anything about the people, but grateful people think about that. And working with Hank was a great honor and joy. And he's the one that you know adjusted and was the glue all the way through this. Yeah, we had so many transitions. Now looking yeah. back, right before I got yeah. there, there was constant turnover. So Hank is the mm -hmm. longest, and, and Owen, you're you're the second. It was wonderful. Wow. And that's I, 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 I just want to thank you for casting such a huge shadow that I'll never get out of it. Me and the current pastors we are always going to be second fiddle to you guys. Yeah, but hey, whatever. We're okay. we're, we're the church the is gospel. healthier than it's ever been. <laughs> Absolutely. It's than Rebuke you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Hey, guys, you know, as you think about uh, Christ Central and about your time at Christ Central, is there maybe one or two things that you're like particularly grateful for? Uh, maybe lessons you've learned or something that you've experienced or received that just makes you say, God, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll share. I, I think no. it was it was at Christ Central where um, <coughs> I, I guess, you know, in, in formation, like my first and actually my only full time ministry before I entered the Air Force, it, it really mm -hmm. set me up to succeed in the Air Force. And a mm. lot of it really had to do um, with humility. This is going to sound really strange, but uh, I, the the way I made it ten years in in CCPC was not was not because of gifts or talents or anything like that. It really 
was um, just being around lots of humble people and mm. seeing the what seeing them do ministry from that context. So, you know, the case of what uh, e- e- Wong, uh, Pastor Wan Sang Lee, he, yeah. you know, just seeing him and being mentored by someone like that in ministry and, and hearing, you know, stories of, of hardship and challenge and, and the way he overcame that really helped me to see um, how success in ministry happens. And it really is mm. just... Yeah. You know, I, I mean, what what a humble leader he was. You know, yeah, I mean, he had been there for wow. decades and decades, and and I think I'm really grateful for that mm-hmm. that relationship that we had, uh, that mem- mentorship we received from him. The other thing was, um, for the military context as well. Like Harold was saying, every, you know, we, we had politicians, but all the leadership they were all older than us, and mm-hmm. so. Um, in, in, in a hierarchical system, which, you know, which the church is, um, being able to work with people your senior in many ways, especially in an Asian American context where age matters, like being able mm-hmm. to minister to people uh, knowing that you are not, you know, that, that there's a lot of deference you, you need yeah. to show. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it, it really helped, you know, because I work with generals and colonels and and others who are senior ranking to me. And I really am grateful for CCPC that they helped me to navigate that and, wow. and uh, were patient with me uh, in, in navigating that in ministry. I, I think, yeah, that, that that legacy of humility that that I, I was able to um, witness and, and mentor, be mentored by was, is, mm-hmm. it was uh, certainly being valuable, so. And, and Hank, as you share that, I just want to say so many of us are just so proud of you and just how you're just flourishing and just doing so well as a chaplain. I think you represent Korean Americans well as a PCA at chaplain. I'm bro, I'm just so proud of you. And it's not just me. So many of us are just so proud of you. And so keep up the good work there, bro. Thanks, everyone. If any of you out there have a desire to be a chaplain <laughs> in the United States Air Force, uh, give them my number, Owen. We're looking for... You're the best recruiter, bro. You, you're always recruiting. You know, I believe in my product. I believe in my product. You know, every time someone's saying, hey, I'm going out to D.C., I'm like, you got to go to Christ Central Presbyterian Church. I believe in my products. I believe in it. So. Oh, thanks, Hank. Uh, Hank is the real... Yeah, I, I'm just going to put another plug because, I mean, Hank is just too modest. You know, they use his voice for the recruiting video for Air Force. Because we've got mm-hmm. Mr. Tom Hanks here. <clears throat> Hank is just... One of the best preaching voices, speaking voices. That's right. And I actually ran into his his boss, right? That's the chaplain you work with. His name is yeah, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I met him on Bellows yeah. Beach, which, by the way, was the most beautiful, pristine thing I've ever seen uh, yeah. because of Hank and Jane Military Reserve. And just speaking with Dave, it was so obvious how uh, how much he loves Hank. Wow. Just what a wonderful wow. person nice. Hank is. And we were just going mm-hmm. back and forth training stories of his character, his relational abilities, how he connects people. And yeah, so Hank, that's not just people from afar. This is the guy you work with in Hawaii. And he beams with with just pleasure and pride over you. That's Uh, awesome. And I'm not surprised. He's another example of humble leadership, servant leadership. Like I said, I've been blessed with with all you guys that that just really have helped me to see. Yeah. Wow. How about you, Harold? What, what, what are you grateful for uh, because of your time at Christ Central? You know, it's funny. Hank and I did not rehearse this at all. And it's hmm. becoming so evident to me that the legacy and the influence of one Sang Lee is way bigger than we thought. Wow. Yeah. I yeah. have it written in my notes. He came as number one. When I look back, he had an open office policy. I felt like I could walk in at any time. He never hmm. felt like yeah. he was in a rush. He would never wow. brush me off. Wow. This man gave time and care for me. And I, I look back in my impetuous pride and just not mm. getting my vision or certain things lined up the way that I wanted, which was one of the mm. reasons for uh, the resignation. Mm. Uh, I think at one thing we were still around. There was a transition of the KM senior pastor at that same time as well. That's right. I think at right. one thing we were around and some of your current elders right now, deacons know this, Owen, I don't think I could have ever left. 
There wow. was no way I could look that man in the eye. And if wow. he was a current senior pastor, if he just, you know, if he humbly just turned and smiled and he just said, <laughs> Harold, <laughs> I want you to stay. If he said that, it's done. <laughs> Even my mom told me, did you talk to anyone else about this decision? I said, no, mom, he's no longer the senior pastor. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, one story about him. Yeah, the humility, I think, is probably the most important quality. Mm -hmm. and, you know, God has to do a lot of work with this one, you know, with me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, not, not, I, I remember before he passed away. I visited you, Owen. I think that was a retreat time. Yeah. yeah. And I got to visit him at his home. And he yep. was really I remember ill. That. I remember and he that. gave me a copy, hand signed copy of his pastoral ministry book. Mm -hmm. and now, I'm not going to break down and cry here. But <laughs> he asked me to pray for him. I remember that, bro. That, that was such a powerful, be beautiful sight. And I still remember. He just was so keeping it real of what his prayer requests were. Mm -hmm. He was in discovery, he was in pain. Yeah. He wanted God to heal him. Yeah. And yeah, I, I lost it, of course, praying for him. But, but you know, yeah. I'm not going to forget that. You know, here was yeah. a man who we all know was legendary in his prayer yeah. life and made yeah. every other pastor feel, uh, yeah, you can't ever fill those shoes, never took a break, but yeah. you know, his own dependence and his own acknowledgement mm -hmm. for the grace of God and for comfort and for healing was, was all too apparent as well. So I don't think I'm going to drop or shake that. Yeah, yeah that's good. It, the other, I guess, general thing, I would like an analogy to marriage. You know, uh, I think ministry leadership or ministry staffing is a lot like marriage. You know, the first five or six years, you blame your spouse and you ask the question, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You know, before I got married and lived with you, I thought I was a patient, mature, good person. But you are the one that brings out all the irritability. You're the one that makes me impatient. Like, you want me to do things at home? Like, you want me to seriously what, serve? My mom spoiled me all my life. I don't know what it means to serve. I can't, I can't cook. I can't clean dishes. So, you know, that was a whole phase. And I, I think, man, ministry leadership, that's my first floor time full-time calling. So mm. I'm so grateful to CCPC, KCPC, mm. EM, mm. loving and doting, just extra measure of grace. Mm. They accepted and allowed me to start figuring out, Amen. you know, Harold, look at yourself in the mirror. And the whole question changed from what's wrong with you to starting, starting to realize what's wrong with me, what's really mm. been wrong with me. So, you know, CCPC Virginia gave enough room and space where, um, you know, head hit the wall and I became more comfortable and uh, not ashamed about what my strengths and weaknesses are. Mm. So, wow. you know, going into the second full-time ministry, I've got I've to gotta play to my strengths. That's right. And then the 99 other areas of weaknesses, I think I've got one or two strengths. And the, this current <laughs> church knows that about me too. They're not, they're not many things I've got. There's maybe one, maybe two. <laughs> Everything else, um, I've got to admit my need. I've got mm -hmm. to cover that spot. I've got to get right. brighter better people around me yeah and that's how ministry can work you know so yeah. i owe all that to ccbc Virginia for helping me wow. see that and own that you know comfortable wow. with that and play to that oh man guys thanks so much for sharing that that's it just makes my heart rejoice to know that not only were you guys a blessing to our church but that our church in in some small ways or significant ways able to bless you and, and to serve you and to encourage you. It's uh, it's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, so we're about to celebrate 30 years. Um, it's crazy. We, we began, as you guys know, uh, back in 1991 as the EM of KCPC. And this June, we're going to have a big 30-year birthday party, 30-year anniversary, just thanking God for his faithfulness wow. and goodness to our church, goodness that we don't deserve. We're only here today because of God's faithfulness. Um, but, you know, as as former pastors of our church, is there something that you would like to tell to your former church as we look forward to the next 30 years, Lord willing, of, of life and ministry that you want us to hear and to take to heart so that we can really be faithful and fruitful uh, as a church? Parting words of wisdom, uh, <laughs> exhortation, encouragement. I'd like to go first. Uh, well, Let me start. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Ahead. I'll go. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, CCPC is a flagship church in the East Coast and across the nation and really around the world. And I have, I have so much pride uh, over CCPC mm -hmm. now. Mm. Not only because, uh, you know, my friend is there, but the leaders and uh, the servants and how it's grown and matured. I think that was one of the, the core values or goals, you know, why the name changed from English ministry to KCPC to Christ Central. And mm. I think that has now been tried and true and proven that the faithfulness and the loyalty and the love and an adoration for the gospel to be at the you know the center place of, of everything Amen. of all of life Amen. for non-believers and Christian lives and Amen. that is the power of God to save and change lives. I just add one more detail to that though. However, being a flagship church that is Christ central and gospel centric, knows its theology and loves the Bible and is so gracious and generous in its ministries and services. I think we're up against it when it comes to our children, the, the next generation and the post-Christian mm. world. <clears throat> So my exhortation is, I have not figured this out, but I think we got to be very contextual and creative and bold mm. in how we minister and apply that same gospel mm. to mm. a generation that is really nothing like ours. The stories we share right now, that is not the context our children are growing up in. And so I think there needs yeah. to be utmost care, contextualizing, mm. creatively looking at, you know, how this same true timeless gospel uh, needs to be, right, addressed, packaged, applied to That's the right. needs now. And really a lot more, I think, resistance. I mm. would say it's harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that would be my prayer. It, it's the same prayer for our church, but certainly for CPC, which is older and more mature. Mm. And, uh, I man, I want CCPC and its gospel witness to advance it in the most creative, bold, Amen. Awesome ways possible. And I know you guys are, you know, into church planning. You've done that. So, man, I just, yeah. I just applaud and celebrate that. Mm. Oh, thank you, Pastor Harold. Pastor Hank. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I echo everything Harold says. I think, you know, and if I could, if I could add to that, uh, two things in, in light of just a recent, uh, church leadership failures around the country, mm. especially in <sighs> the age American context. Yeah, um, you know what was the common denominator in a lot of them? If you if you look hard mm. enough, and I think a lot of it is, I, I think in an you know not only Asian American church, a Korean American church, uh, we we tend to put our pastors on pedestals. Mm. Very good. And I'll tell you what happens when you put your pastor on a pedestal. Uh, either they will, number one, disappoint you because they're not the idol you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Or or number two, you allow them certain freedoms that maybe they shouldn't have or certain mm -hmm. liberties and you isolate them. And mm -hmm. before you know it, there isn't that um, accountability or it's not yeah. necessarily just accountability, but yeah. care. <laughs> For the pastor, it's just kind of like, well, you're the pastor, you, you do this, or you're the pastor, you, you can't do this, you can't do this, and you you start to treat them differently. But I think mm. the, the the strength of the Presbyterian Church is the plurality of elders. And, and what That's I would right. encourage CCPC, what's going to get you through to the next thirty years, what's going to get us through to doing this again in thirty years with Owen, mm. celebrating forty years at CCPC, is you mm. you, you don't do that. You treat him like a man you mm. you put only one person on a pedestal and that's amen. jesus christ amen. and you realize that amen. owen is so is is a gift so but he's also a man mm. and you show him all manner of grace and patience you realize this is a marathon and not a sprint so don't force your pastor to sprint uh you know pace him you know, pace mm -hmm. you yourselves as leaders, pace yourselves and, and run together, you know, hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's the thing. Like when you see pastors in isolation, it's never a good thing. And so stay yeah. close to Pastor Owen and let him be close to you and 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 love him. You know, and, and I don't want to talk just about Pastor Owen, but the second thing I would say and kind of echoing what Harold said too is is you have to think about uh, handing over this 
church to your children and, and your mm -hmm. grandchildren. That's what, you know, it's, it's, you know, when I think about people like Sam and James and, you know, uh, Josh and, and Stacy is, you know, if they have children, I mean, it's going to be, what is that? Fourth generation we're talking now. And yeah. you got to think about your grandchildren. What is this church um, going to look like for your grandchildren? And, and mm -hmm. you invest in that. Once again, it's that, mm -hmm. it's that 30 year perspective, not just, you know, how are we going to get yeah. through the next five years? So I would say, you know, you, you continue to run the race with that. Um, mm -hmm. And like Harold said, you know, it's the gospel that's got to be your foundation, not, Amen. not, not Owen, not, Amen. you know, anything else, but uh, Amen. that's Amen. what I would say. It's, it really, oh, like, so like Harold said, it's, it's a, you know, there are, there are not many churches like CCPC. And oh, so yeah. you can always find something to grumble and complain about in, in, in the best of relationships, right? <laughs> but what is your attitude going to be? Is it going to be like, oh, well, we don't have this, or why are we like this, or why is this like this? Instead of saying that, to have a grateful heart for what you guys do have. But, you know, I'm, I'm not mm. saying you don't call out issues and, and improvements and changes, but yeah. using the analogy of a marriage, I mean, I think a healthy marriage is a marriage in which you're able to spot and speak the truth and love to your spouse. But at the same time, you wake up every day and you say, I don't deserve this person. And and wow. I love them. Mm -hmm. And and I'm blessed to have them. And I think we should have this exact same attitude about our churches, our church leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if as a congregation, you guys can do that, you know, we'll see you in 30 years. And rejoice. Wow. Yeah. Hank, I'm so blessed, man. <laughs> Refreshed. Listening to you. <laughs> Golly. Oh, man, I, I hope every member of our church listens to this and, and takes those last few minutes that you guys share just just to heart. I just can't uh, just thank you enough for those words, uh, Hank and Harold. And um, and, and I feel like I need to do this on behalf of Christ Central. I, I'm thinking of so many people in my head that I want to represent to you guys right now from like, you know, the Sam and Tammy's, the Harry and B sons, the John and Samantha, uh, uh, from, uh, from all the old. Not, not, I, don't, I shouldn't say old. That's not called um, an old. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> old school, uh, old school to all the way down to people who've never met you, but they're actually they're reaping the benefits of the seeds that you planted while you were here. And I, on behalf of Christ Central, I just want to say, Harold and Hank, thank you so much for the way you loved and served and sacrificed for our church. We would not be here, humanly speaking, without you guys. Yes, it was God who did it, but God did it using you guys, your love, your labor of love, your tears, your preaching, your prayers. And, um, and I, I get to reap the, the beautiful church that I get to serve is because of all the work that guys like you guys, like you guys did. So I just want to say thank you. Um, we, we are indebted to you and to your pastoral leadership and ministry. And I hope that you both know how much we love and adore and appreciate you guys. And really from the bottom of my heart. Thanks, God. Oh, and I, you know, I know this is about the church and the 30 years there. If I could just say one more thing. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll say without getting choked up, uh, I'll try. But really, like uh, I said it to you before, the last time I saw you, but really, th thanks for loving CCPC. You get it's really gracious yeah. what you're saying about Harold and I, but your leadership over this past decade has brought the church to the healthiest place it's ever been. And thank you for your long suffering, your leadership, your vision. Um, you know, it's, I kind of feel like CCPC is like my sister that I gave in marriage to you. And you're like my <laughs> brother in law. I mean, it's like. My heart mm. sings every time I see and experience your ministry mm. there, and I'm just so grateful for it. So praise God for you. Yeah, I pray that God will continue to keep you humble and connected yeah. and, and free from the things that have plagued others. Uh, Amen. So. Amen. Oh, and yeah. thank you for those words, and you continually prove it in all my years of friendship and everyone listening in. You know, I can honestly say I don't, think there could be a better friend or brother someone could have. Uh, this man has just genuinely, uh, he's the type of person, thanks very simple actually. I'm the one, the odd man out here. These guys, both of them, Owen really, he generally tries to move out of the way and elevate and promote and applaud. 
and just breathe encouragement and love into other people's lives. I have rarely ever met someone like this guy, this man. And uh, it's that, that, that is one of the features where I see and sense Jesus in your life, Owen, in your family, in the church. And um, you know, God is blessing it, blessing it. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm just so encouraged by expressing that. Well, you know, it's really easy to do when I have friends like you guys. It really is, man. Well, hey, guys, thanks so much. Yeah, come for visit us in up. Hawaii, both of you. Oh, I can't wait. Here. <laughs> I'm going to have to like, put together, I'm just going to have like, to make up like a conference for oh, visiting to like, invite you guys to come. And something. Oh, come. why not? Time me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there. The next anniversary. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. Yes. Hey guys, uh, thanks uh, thanks so much for joining me on our um, Central Clubhouse tonight. This is a really, really special episode, and I hope that God uses this to bless and encourage our entire church. I love you guys, man. Thanks. Love you, Owen. God love bless. you, Owen. Love you, Harold. Okay, love you, man. Good to see you guys. Miss you already. Bye, Later. guys.